Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today what we have for you is a video on my new 85 Toyota 4Runner Brodozer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a front axle service which includes doing a 25 millimeter trunnion bearing marlin crawler upgrade. So I'm going to change out the 17 millimeter trunnion bearings for larger 25 millimeter bearings and the associated parts that go with that. Now the reason why I'm doing this job is because when I took my truck in for an alignment, the alignment was towed out and then I went to alignment shop and had them bring the tow in pretty much perfectly straight. And as soon as I drove it, I got this gnarly death wobble, like just crazy death wobble. So I had to make a U-turn quickly, go back to the shop, and they towed it back out for me, and then it drove fine. And doing my research on this problem, a lot of times it could be something wrong with the front end. Maybe your knuckle bearing preloads off, maybe you have an issue with your wheel bearings, those are loose, maybe you have bad tie rods. So I'm doing this repair to eliminate some of those possibilities. We're going to do the full service and that includes replacing the wheel bearings, the wheel bearing races, all the associated seals, everything from basically the outside of the wheel in towards the axle, we're going to put in new parts. Also in this video, we're going to use a special service tool that most people can't exactly get because Toyota doesn't make it anymore but there's a guy on the forum called IHateMud.com and this guy sells a version of the knuckle alignment tool. He took the original design to a machine shop and they made all the parts needed to make the alignment tool kit. The other thing I bought from this guy on the forum is he has this tool that allows you to drive out the bearing caps top and bottom easier. I bought both those tools from him and then I had to buy a bushing that will work for the 25 millimeter trunnion bearings because the alignment tool that he sells is only going to work for 17 millimeter trunnion bearings. So I had to make a bushing through this company called McMaster Car and that allowed me to use the alignment tool. So we're going to do the alignment of the knuckle also in this video. I heavily debated whether it was worthwhile to make this video because there are some existing videos that are done really well. One of them comes from Low Range Off-Road. They have a nine part series that takes you from the tear down of the axle to putting all the trusses and welding it and painting it and bead blasting parts. I mean, it goes to the nth degree of detail. It's a very well done series. I highly recommend it and we're gonna put a link in the video description to that series. There was also another video, two part series that I thought was pretty good by this guy and we're gonna put a link to that video series also in the video description. The reason why I thought it was worthwhile to make this video is because I didn't see that anybody showed doing the 25 millimeter Marlin Crawler trunnion bearing upgrade. I didn't see any videos for that and then there was one video of a guy showcasing an alignment tool, but it wasn't all that well done, so I thought we could improve upon that. So that's another reason why we chose to do this video is because we can show better of how to properly use that knuckle alignment tool. I'm pretty sure that what we're going to show you is going to work for a lot of the solid front axle Toyotas, the old FJ40s, the FJ60s, FJ80s, the old Toyota pickups, the 84 and 85 Forerunners. So it's going to work for all those vehicles because I'm pretty sure they're all very similar in how they go together with all the parts and the method you use to take them apart and put them back together. Even if you're not planning on doing this type of service, if you go for wheeling in your rig, knowing how to disassemble those hubs and get to where you can replace a broken burr field joint because you broke one out in the field and now you're kind of stuck and you have to make that repair. Watching this video might benefit you because now you're going to learn all the steps to do the tear down to where you can get that spindle off, you can get that burr field joint, you can pull out the bad burr field 
You could put in your replacement burr field that you hopefully brought with you for wheeling. And then you could get your truck back together and back on the trail and back home safely. With all that said, let's show you all the parts and tools we bought for this job. So here's all the parts I got for this job. Starting over on this right side and going left, you follow my little pointer tool all the way over to this imaginary line. This was all part of a Marlin Crawler front end service kit. It comes with all the gaskets, shims to adjust the preload on the knuckles. These are a lock washer for the preset of the load for the hub bearings. You have new rubber gaskets for the knuckles. You have the felts for the knuckles. You have these eco seals that Marlin Crawler makes. They're supposedly really nice and last a long time and work well. You have some other stuff for the front hubs. You have your inner bearings and races. You have your outside bearing and races. You have the dust seal that goes on the back side of the hub. And you'll see we have some duplicate stuff. We have some more of these washers for the adjustment nuts for the hubs. And then some more gaskets for the manual hubs. So that's all that stuff, part of the front end service kit. You also have these 17 millimeter trunnion bearing and races. The 17 millimeter bearings are the OEM stock size. But because I have bigger tires, I'm running 37 inch tires on this bro dozer, I decided to get the Marlin Crawler 25 millimeter trunnion bearing upgrade. So I'm not gonna use these. And I'll tell you what, the first person that comments and says that they would like this set of four trunnion bearings, I'll send them to you for free. Here there you, you go. go. Everything you see here is part of the Marlin Crawler 25 millimeter trunnion bearing upgrade. So you have these burly lower arms that go into the bottom of the knuckle and then depending on how you're currently set up i currently have a marlin crawler high steer setup you can get the upper arms too but i don't need them because i already have marlin crawler upper arms so what i have to do is i have to press out the 17 millimeter shafts and replace them with these 25 millimeter shafts and then obviously you have your 25 millimeter trunnion bearings and the races that go with it. And then you have the eight bolts for these lower arms. So you'll see in a comparison, comparing the 25 millimeter one to the 17 millimeter one, you have more roller bearings. And I don't know all the science behind it, but supposedly this 25 millimeter bearing is gonna be a lot more durable and stronger than its 17 millimeter counterpart. So that's why I'm doing it because with bigger tires, you have a lot more strain on your front end and these 25 millimeter trunnion bearings are gonna be able to handle that extra load better than the OEM ones. As part of my inspection of the front end, I did notice that one of my tie rods had a little bit of play. So as part of this job, I'm gonna replace one of the tie rods on the passenger side. So I got these again from Marlin Crawler. Also for the job, I need grease. So I found that this Redline CV2 grease will work both for the bearings, all of them, for the trunnion bearings, for the hub bearings, and it will also work for the Burfield joints. So I'm gonna use a one size fits all Redline synthetic high performance grease. So I have it in a tube form, and then I have it in a container. Another nice thing that I bought is this bearing greaser so instead of putting grease in your hand and slowly working grease into the balls of the bearing i have this greasing tool that we'll show in the video lastly the original toyota service tool is very expensive marlin crawler actually sells a version of it but it's over 500 dollars. i found a guy on ihatemud.com form this guy jason was nice enough to take the time to get a special service tool design that people can use to align their knuckles. The reason why this is important is because you want your hub bearings, your manual hub devices, your seals, you want everything aligned with the axle shafts and with the axle housing. And this tool is gonna allow me 
to get the alignment perfect or close to perfect to where I'm not just guessing with how many shims I put top and bottom to get the proper preload and the proper alignment. This part, this shaft, these two pieces, and this piece and this piece are all part of the knuckle alignment tool. Jason also makes this other tool that's meant to help you remove the upper and lower knuckle arms. And then it also works as a support while you're putting the arms in place. This tool will support the inner race of the bearing so you don't put any undue load on the bearing and potentially mess up your new trunnion bearings. Now, this tool that Jason makes was meant just for the stock application for 17 millimeter trunnion bearings. Because I bought the upgrade kit for Marlin Crawler, the 25 millimeter kit, this tool won't work for it. I asked Jason, hey, has anybody ever asked you to make a bushing to where you can adapt this tool to work with a 25 millimeter kit? And he says I was the first person to ask him, which was kind of shocking. So he did turn me on to a company called McMaster Car and he said they do custom work. So I had McMaster Car make me some custom bushings. It has a inner diameter of 17 millimeter and an outer diameter of just under 25 millimeters, like 24.95. So now with these bushings slid over the shaft, this will now work for the 25 millimeter bearing. So now I can use this tool to get a proper alignment of my knuckles. Finally, this product right here is a layout fluid and when you're doing the alignment for your knuckle, this little piece right here is gonna be making a mark on here and you need some way to be able to read the mark. So what I'm gonna do is spray some of this fluid on here to where the mark that this piece makes is visible to where I can then take measurements from where this mark and another mark are made with that tool. As a reference, of course, we're gonna utilize a factory service manual. I picked this up on eBay. If you do a search online, you'll most likely find one for a reasonable price. I think I paid maybe 100 bucks for this. Not too bad because it's gonna really help me out with future repairs. With all that said, let's get started with this job. Okay, to start off, we have the front end of the rig jacked up and we have the front axle supported with six ton jack stands on both sides. I have the rear tires chalked in the rear because we are in my driveway and it's a little bit of a slant going downhill this direction. We're gonna get the tires off and then because we're gonna be removing the axles, we don't wanna get gear oil all over the place, we're gonna drain the gear oil from the front differential. We're ready to drain the differential fluid. Always a good practice. You wanna make sure you can get the fill plug off first before you drain the fluid because if you have a serious problem getting this off, you're not gonna drain all your gear oil out and then have an empty differential and you won't be able to drive it. This top plug is a 24 millimeter. I'm just gonna use a half inch drive with a medium length extension because this is inset because it has this extra armor from this trail gear protector cover that has been welded on. Okay, got the plug out. And then now, this drain plug isn't the original drain plug. They put an Allen one. It's a 10 millimeter Allen plug. Just get ready for gear oil to come out. So I'm gonna get this up nice and close so you'll get less splash. And you can see it's pretty clean. I recently changed it, but I'm gonna just fill it with new stuff when we're all done. In order to do this job, you have to get the steering arms disconnected from the knuckles on both sides. This is the tie rod that I notice has a little play. If I move it back and forth, I can hear a little clunk and I can feel it. Since I'm gonna be replacing this one, I wanna be able to get the new one in about the same spot. So I'm gonna put a paint mark here. And so this will let me know how many threads are showing and so I can match up the new one to the old one and get it pretty close. I'm still gonna get an alignment afterwards, but now that I have this marked, I can loosen this nut and know that I can get the new one back in about the same position. So utilizing a big adjustable wrench on the nut of the tie rod and a pipe wrench on the steering arm, we were able to break it free. At first, 
we were thinking lefty loosey but on this side on the passenger side it's reverse threads so we struggled a little bit and finally figured out our error that we had to go the other way next we're gonna straighten out the cotter pin remove it and then remove the castle nut and then once we have that done we're gonna get a two draw puller in here put pressure on this and break the tie rod free from this upper steering arm The castle nuts are 19 millimeter. I'm just gonna zip it off with my impact gun. Now we're gonna get the puller in place and pop it free. Some people like the hammer technique of hammering on it to break free the tie rod from the knuckle, but I like using pullers. Okay, there's one free. That one broke free nice and easy. We have the two broken free on the passenger side. Now we're gonna go over to the driver's side and we're gonna disconnect the other one. So on the driver's side, you just have one tie rod that connects up to the upper steering knuckle. Again, I'm just gonna straighten out the cotter pin, remove the castle nut, and just like you saw on the other side, use a puller to break it free. I replaced the worn out tie rod with the new one that I got from Marlin Crawler. We didn't bother showing it because it's not anything technical. Once you get this nut loose, and remember that this is reverse threads, we actually had to turn this lock nut clockwise to loosen it. That was a little bit of a learning experience, as we found when we were struggling. But once you got this loose and you break free the outer tie rod from the knuckle here, then it's just a matter of unscrewing it out. Now remember we put a paint mark on there, and the paint mark was so we can get the new tie rod in the same position. Here's my paint mark on the old one and I counted from the end and it was 13 threads in. So all I had to do is screw in the new one with 13 threads exposed and then I know I got it in the same exact position as the old one and my alignment won't be really far off from where it was. Once you got it screwed in, you put it back into the knuckle, I tightened up the castle nut to 67 foot-pounds, put in a new cotter pin, and then I just got on here with my pipe wrench and I turned the lock nut counterclockwise to lock it in place. No torque spec for this, I just used a big adjustable wrench, got it tight with my arm strength and called it good. All right, we're ready to get started on this job. We already did the passenger side, we learned some things from doing that side first, and now we're gonna show you how to do the job on the driver's side. To get set up, you have to know that this is a really dirty job, so it's good to have a bunch of rags available, paper towels, and you want to have everything set up to where you could be really organized. So we have a piece of cardboard laid out on the ground, so as I start to take parts off, I can lay them out in the order I took them off, so I know the, the sequence that they go back on the truck. I also have a lot of magnetic trays to put tools and parts, bolts and nuts and anything that I take off in the trays so I don't lose track of them. And I also have some microfiber towels lined up on the ground to where I could put even some more parts because as you see, there's gonna be a lot of parts that we're gonna be taking off and laying out in the order that we took them off. So we just wanna be really organized and ready to go for this job. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break free the brake line right here because the way the Marlin Crawler steering knuckle is set up, there's no way to slide this brake line out. So I actually have to disconnect it in order to get the line free and out of the way. So this is just a standard 10 millimeter connection. I'm gonna use a flex head flare nut wrench to break it free. What I'm gonna be ready with is I'm gonna be ready with a 730 seconds vacuum cap to put over the end of the tubing on this side. And then I'm gonna use a silicone plug to block this line up because you want to limit how much brake fluid you have dripping out of your system. So this is just going to plug it up to where it's not going to be a constant flow of brake fluid and I'm going to drain out my master cylinder. Might be good to get a rag underneath here because you're going to be dripping brake fluid. More fluid is going to be coming out of here than the metal brake line so I'm going to be ready to put this plug in. Slide that plug in, push it in tight 
and then now that stopped the leak. I'm going to slide my 7 30 seconds vacuum cap over the end of the metal tubing and then now that's going to stop that from leaking any further. I'm just going to wipe this down a little bit. The next thing I have to do to get the brake line free is there's this metal tab that slides in and captures the end of the brake line. So you just got to get a screwdriver or some type of pry bar and knock it up out of there. Based off of where the clip is currently oriented, I need to knock it up this way, but I don't really have a whole lot of room to knock it up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock it and twist it this way to where I can knock it out this side towards the front. Now that it's facing towards the front, I'm going to knock it out. And there it is. Now I can just pull this out. I'm going to let gravity help me out and I'm going to put this up to where this is pointing upward so less likely for it to leak anymore. There we go. That's facing up and now it's out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the two caliper bolts. They're 19 millimeter. I'm going to use a deep 19 millimeter socket and a 3 8 ratchet. Once you got the bolts loose, you should be able to get them out with your fingers unless you're in a really rusty area of the country and a lot of corrosion is fighting you. You just want to support the weight of the caliper a little bit to take pressure off the bolt. For some reason, the previous owner used some really long bolts with this thing, longer than they have to be, but who knows what the reason is. Now we just pull the caliper off and set it aside. The next thing we're going to do is take off the freewheeling hub cover. You'll want the mechanism in the free position so the locking mechanism is retracted all the way. These little bolts are 10 millimeter. I'm just going to use a short 10 millimeter socket and my Milwaukee cordless ratchet. These bolts shouldn't be on there very tight so you should be able to remove them with relative ease. Like your CME, you might have to hold a little counter pressure with your free hand in order to break them free. All six of the bolts are out. Now we should be able to slide this out. And here's your mechanism with a bunch of grease on it. So like I said, we're going to set these parts in the order we take them off. So I'm just going to set this on my cardboard and put it right there. Now that you have the free wheeling hub cover off, you'll want to get in here with a rag and clean up this area so you can see the C-clip that you have to remove. So I have it oriented now where the opening of the C-clip is facing upward and I'm going to get in there with a pair of snap ring pliers, expand it out and slide it off the shaft. Expand it and slide it off. And so there's the C-clip. Now I'm just going to put the C-clip on the cardboard next to the hub. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this freewheeling hub body. It's held on by 12 millimeter nuts and behind the nut is a washer and then there's a cone washer. These are on there fairly tight, 23 foot pounds. So if you don't have an impact gun to remove them, one trick you can do is you can put a couple lug nuts back on and then get in here with a pry bar or a big screwdriver so you can hold it steady while you work a ratchet with your free hand. Since I have an impact gun, I'm going to zip them off with this. You see that that cone washer came out on its own, which is nice. Usually they're locked in there pretty good. So I'm just going to put this in the tray with the washer and the nuts. Now the reason why these cone washers came out so easily is the previous owner did tell me that he serviced this front end. To what level he serviced it, I'm not 100% sure. But if this hub body had been on there for a really long time, you're most likely going to find those cone washers are not just going to come out like they did for me. So one technique is, once you have the nut and the washer out of the way, you take a brass drift, you put it right in line with the stud, and you knock it. And that will most likely jar the cone washer loose. Another technique I've seen is that you take a brass hammer and you just tap on this thing 
in different spots and that will most likely enable you to get the cone washers free also basically you just have to tap on it either with a brass drift on the stud or tap on the body of it with a brass hammer I wouldn't suggest a regular steel hammer brass is softer so it's not going to mar it up and then once you get all your cone washers out you can slide this hub body off and then we'll just put this on the cardboard there's a lot of grease to where I can't see what I'm doing so I'm now going to clean up this area to where I can get the next parts off now that I have this cleaned up, the next thing I have to do is I have to unbend a couple tabs on this lock washer. One tab is gonna be bent backwards over the adjusting nut that sets the preload for the hub bearings, and then the other one is gonna be bent forward over this front nut, which is the lock nut. Looking at it, I can tell that the previous owner just locked in the lock nut, but he didn't lock in the adjusting nut. So all I have to do is unbend this tab right here. I'll use a screwdriver and a hammer to bend it outward. Now that the tab looks like this again, pretty much straight up and down, now I can remove this lock nut. So this special service tool came from Trail Gear. It's 54 millimeter. It's got a 3 8 ratchet connection. What I'm seeing here is that this lock nut is basically barely even hand tight, which is not good. Because what I learned on the other side is that this lock nut is torqued to a fairly high value. If I remember correctly, it's like 33 foot pounds. I shouldn't have been able to loosen this like this with just with my hand if it was done correctly. And as part of my inspection of this vehicle, when I was trying to figure out the problems with the front end, I noticed that there was a little bit of wheel bearing play with this side so this is starting to make sense now that maybe he didn't get the preload right and he didn't have the lock nut very tight either i'm just going to spin this off lefty loosey and i'm just going to throw this on the cardboard i'm going to get in here with the rag and wipe up a little more grease and i should just be able to pull this lock washer out even if the tab was bent over the adjusting nut for the preload for the bearing, you would be able to slide this out because there's no lock nut anymore to fight you. So you don't necessarily have to unbend the back tab. It should slide off for you. Just wiggle it off with a screwdriver. And you can see it's got this key. It's keyed so it can't slide on the hub shaft. Once you get it on there, it can't rotate because of that key. One thing to note about this adjusting nut and the lock nut is there's definite sides to them. So there's a side that's more perfectly flat, and then there's a side that has kind of beveled edges to it. And the beveled edge side faces outward, and the flat side is gonna go towards that lock washer for the lock nut, and then on the adjusting nut, which we're gonna take off next, that flat side is gonna go against the bearing. So just know that there's two distinct sides, and don't put it on backwards. So I got the special service tool again and I'm going to get on the adjusting nut and get it free. And again, it was just barely on there. It was kind of hand tight, which is not what you want. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get ready to put everything back together, the proper sequence and the finishing torque spec. I shouldn't have been able to remove this with my hand. So let's see if this guy did it right. Yep, he had it in the right orientation. The beveled side is facing out and the flat side was facing the bearing. So now that we have the lock nut, the washer, and the adjusting nut out of the way, we should be able just to grab a hold of the rotor and pull the whole hub assembly off the spindle. So I just pulled it back a little bit to where I can get the outer bearing off. So here's your outer bearing. I'll just clean it off a little bit for you so you can see the, the balls there. So that's free. Now I'll just pull this off the rest of the way. Don't worry about getting grease on the rotor. You can clean it up later with brake clean. You don't want to get big smears on it, but just know that you can clean it off after. It's not a big deal. So here's your whole hub and rotor assembly. I'm going to clean some grease off of this spindle. The next thing that we want to remove is this knuckle spindle. 
we have all these 17 millimeter bolts there's eight of them and once we get those off we can take the knuckle spindle dust cover off and seal and then we're gonna have to knock this with a hammer break it free so we could slide this off I'm gonna use my impact gun again on these I noticed in the part schematic in my 85 Forerunner factory service manual, this one isn't part of the schematic. And I have a feeling this might be a, basically a spacer to replace the fact that I don't have a brake dust shield. That's just a theory. Also to note that the previous owner, the guy who built this truck, he did a independent front hub swap. So the hubs that I have on this are from an 86 Forerunner and those hub setups were a little bit longer to where he wouldn't have to use wheel spacers to match the rear end so i think what this is for is just replacing that dust shield and it says up and up to let you know the orientation this is just a seal here it might get stuck on there a little bit or maybe you can get it off all the way with your hands came off pretty clean just note that see that indentation that points downward so now what's needed to get this spindle off is a little bit of brute force. I'm going to utilize a brass drift, brass hammer. First, I'm just going to tap on this a little bit. I'm going to take my brass drift on the edges. You're just looking for a little bit of separation from the spindle from the knuckle here. It's moving a little bit. Okay, there we go. Once you got it twisting a little bit and you're kind of breaking free the connection of the spindle with the gasket sure in between it and the knuckle, if you get on here with a rag to give yourself a little bit more friction to hold it, you can work it back and forth and then you can finally slide it off. So all you're really trying to overcome is the connection of the spindle with the gasket and then with the gasket against the knuckle so you just got to get a good enough grip on it wiggle it and you can most likely get it free and you can see it's making a huge mess down here i'm just going to take a rag and wipe off a bunch of this excess grease see the fact that it's red and then black what i noticed is that i saw that gear oil was dripping out on this driver's side so something is up with the seal on this side and I'm hoping that there's not any damage to the axle housing from the previous owner. I'm just going to wipe this up a little bit and then I'm just going to go set it down. So keeping with the order I've got all the hub components in the relation that they came off. So again what you're seeing here this is a mixing of the gear oil with the grease that the previous owner used. I'm just going to get in here with a paper towel and get some of this out of here and straight into the trash can. Get some more. You could just tell by the viscosity of this grease that it had been mixing with the gear oil, which is what you don't want. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out this axle. The Burfield joint has two flat sides, top and bottom. And what you need to do is orient those flat sides so they're in line with this upper and lower knuckle arms. That's the way it's oriented. There's a bearing underneath here and a bearing underneath there, and it's flat in this section, then it's round. In order to get it oriented, you could reach in and grab your drive shaft and turn it to where you can get the right orientation. So if you see me reaching in here, you can see that the shaft is turning. You want to just turn it to where those flat sections are in the right orientation. Get your head in there and look. Looks like it needs to go a little bit more counterclockwise. Maybe a little too much. So now I have the flat spots pretty close to the right orientation. I'll know when I start pulling out on the shaft and seeing how well it lines up so I can remove the whole axle from the knuckle. So I'm gonna grab on it to a rag to give myself some more contact here. There we go, I got it started. You wiggle it and then you can slide it out. I'll stop right here so you can see the flat sections I'm talking about. So see, flat section here has to line up with this bearing underneath here and then I'll show you the other one when I pull it all the way out. And then you have the other flat section right here. Now you'll note this side is the longer side because of the offset of the differential. So this has a much longer inner shaft 
than the opposing side which has a shorter shaft because it has to travel less of a distance to go into the differential. So I'm just going to set this on the cardboard. Now I'm just going to get in here with a bunch of paper towels and rags and clean out a lot of this excess grease. Okay, that's good enough for now. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this oil seal retainer. It's a two-piece part. There's an upper section and a lower section. It's held on by 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna zip them out with my Milwaukee cordless ratchet with a short 10 millimeter socket. After we get those off, there will be a felt that we're gonna pull backwards. There's a rubber seal and then there is a metal ring. So I have the ones that I can get access to turning the knuckle forward. Now I'm going to turn the knuckle backwards and I could get the other ones off. There's eight bolts total. So now that all the bolts are free, we can just pull off retaining rings and you'll note that it has like a beveled edge and you want that beveled edge facing the seal and it jutting outward on the back side. So we're just going to set these down. So we'll just pull the felt out. Then we're going to get the rubber seal. You can see this. Just pull that towards the back. Get it out of there all the way. And then lastly, there's this metal ring in here that we have to get out. And that's a split ring. I can feel the little edge right here. See if I can get in there with a screwdriver. There we go. So it's split. To where you can insert it easier and get it off easier all three pieces are out the split ring the rubber ring and the felt what i'm going to do now is i'm just turning this and seeing how smooth the bearings are and what i noticed right about where the knuckle or the tire would be pointing straight forward there's like a depression where the bearing just kind of drops into an indentation and it's like indexing that's not a good sign that the bearing is in good shape or the race is in good shape. That's one thing to note. The next thing I want to check is see what kind of preload the previous owner had on these knuckle bearings, the trunnion bearings. I'm not going to check it with it in that depression, that rough spot, because that's not going to give me a true value. So I'm going to turn it a little bit past that rough section. You use this thing, it's basically like a fish scale for weighing fish. You hook this on the knuckle arm and then you pull outward perpendicular to the arm and as soon as you see movement, you stop. And let's see where that's at. So that was at about 11 pounds of force. You measure to the top of the ring. What I learned when running bigger tires, like I'm running 37 inch tires, Marlin Crawler and other people recommend that you should have at least a 15 pound preload. So the preload is a little bit less than optimal for the size of tires I'm running. That's one reason why maybe I was getting that death wobble on the front end of my vehicles because both the passenger and driver's side preload of the trunnion bearings wasn't optimal for my size of tire and it enabled that death wobble to happen. The next thing we're gonna remove is this upper arm. It's held on by 17 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna use my gun again and zip them off. Now there are some washers in there and because it sits in a recessed hole, they're a little hard to get out. I'm gonna utilize this little magnet to grab a hold of them. There's one. Dip. Three. Four. So this upper arm is held in with cone washers also, just like the hub body. So we have to knock on this with a brass drift, brass hammer to knock those cone washers free a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the technique of using a brass drift. I'm going to tap on the studs and hopefully break free the cone washers a little bit. I'm also going to tap on it just on the sides with the brass hammer. Getting my head down here, I can see that there's separation between the arm and the knuckle. To get this arm off the rest of the way, you could just get a pry bar in there and slowly work it on each edge, getting it up evenly, and you can get it out. I've seen it on a video, it works. 
since I bought this special service tool from that guy on IHateMud.com, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize it. It's got three pieces basically. It's got this sleeve that slides on, it's got this shaft that slides onto this part. And the way this works is you get it in there, this section right here, it's gonna push on the shaft of this arm and drive it upward and off these studs. This is the lower arm that was on the driver's side. So basically, this is gonna be pushing right up against this. You don't wanna be pushing on the bearing, you wanna be pushing on the shaft. You can imagine the bearing is gonna be right around this circumference. So that's what you're aiming for. This section right here is just gonna be resting on the other bearing surface on the bottom side. What this piece is for is say for instance, you weren't doing the 25 millimeter upgrade, you were sticking with 17 millimeter bearings. When you get ready to install the arms after you get your new bearings in, what this extra sleeve is for is to support the inner race like so. Say for instance, it's not going in really smooth and you're tapping down on this to get it fully seated. You're not gonna put any undue pressure on your bearing and potentially ruin your bearing with the insertion. So that's what this sleeve is for. This isn't gonna work for me because I have 25 millimeter bearings and this is just gonna slide right through. So if I wanted to utilize this tool for the reinsertion of the arms to support the bearing, I would have to make a custom sleeve that would slide onto this, which I don't have. So I'm not gonna be able to do it. So I hope that explains how this tool works. I'm gonna slide this sleeve off because I don't need it. And I'm gonna get this in place inside the knuckle. And you just turn it right clockwise to expand it and left to retract. So I have to expand it out to contact the post on this arm. So once you have the end of the special service tool mating up with the shaft really square, you can see that there's a little dimple in this arm and there's actually a little protrusion on the end of that special service tool that will sit in there to help you get a good alignment. I found that a standard one inch open end wrench works well to turn the shaft. So I'm just gonna turn it clockwise and then it's gonna slowly drive this arm up and off. And there we go. Here's one of the cone washers and the other three are still in there. I could just pop these out with a screwdriver probably. There we go. Okay, so I have the upper arm off and all the cone washers out. You'll also wanna pull off any shim that the previous person used and keep it with the upper arm so you know where the shim came from. These shims are what allow you to get the proper preload of the trunnion bearings. Less thick shims will make the preload tighter. If you use more shims, then you lessen the preload. So that's how you do it. So I'm gonna put this with the upper arm. So we're gonna get this lower cap off. It's the sister of this one from the passenger side. It's held on by four 17 millimeter nuts and there's washers that go with it. Again, I'm gonna use my gun, zip them off. To get this lower cap off, you might have to persuade it by hitting it with a brass hammer or you could use a brass drift also, knock it on all sides to break it free. What I found on the other side and this side is it just coming right out for me. I'm able to pull it off. You're gonna have a shim on this side possibly depending on how the previous person set it up for the preload. I'm gonna keep these two pieces together, the shim and the lower cap together. Now that we have the upper steering knuckle off and the lower cap off, we can just slide this knuckle off. Be ready for the lower bearing to plop out. So the lower bearing's right here. It fit in right here. I'm just gonna set this aside. And now we could take out our upper bearing. Just sits in there. And then now we can get off these other pieces that we took off on the backside. So we have the steel ring. It could get tweaked a little bit, just tweak it back. You could take off the rubber seal, which we're gonna replace, and then you slide off the felt that we're also gonna replace. So you can actually just stuff these in the trash, or better yet, set them out in the orientation that you took them off so you remember first the uh, metal seal, rubber seal, then the felt. The next thing that we wanna do is get the 
inner axle seal out. There's a couple of ways that I would suggest you do it. One is you can get this type of hooked seal puller tool and it's got a pin to where you can put it in different positions. You can pop out the pin and then twist it in a different orientation depending on your need. Whether you're going to utilize the long hook or the short hook. I found that this will work pretty good with uh, utilizing the long hook. And the way you do it is you basically get this behind the seal, lever this side against the inside of the axle housing, and then you pop it out. What I like even better than this tool is basically the slide hammer puller from OTC. So I'm going to utilize a couple arms. I'm going to expand them out behind the seal to grab it, and then I'm going to slide hammer that seal out. This provides you much less of a chance of scoring the inside of the axle housing. So you get the arms behind the seal, you turn it to tighten up the arms against the outsides of the seal, and then you just slide hammer it and it'll pop it out. You can see how the puller arms grab the seal to where you can get it out. So what I have here is I have the shaft with the old axle seal onto the section of the shaft where it rides on this polished surface, the shiny surface. I noticed that it rocks quite a bit. The rubber part of the seal isn't really fitting super tight. Maybe the seal got a little bit damaged when I removed it with the puller, but it looks like it's mostly intact and pretty straight. I'll slide this one out of the way and then I'll slide the Eco Seal from Marlin Crawler onto the polished section. And I could already tell that I cannot move it at all. It's like, it's pretty darn tight. I can move it a little bit, but not as much as the other one. So it fits much tighter. So I have a feeling that something happened to this seal or maybe it just wasn't the right seal. But this one fits a lot tighter and hopefully it's gonna be a, a leak proof seal and I'm not gonna get gear oil passed and have a mixing of the gear oil and the knuckle grease. We're gonna remove the upper and lower races for these trunnion bearings. The way this axle housing is made is they provide a couple little half moon cutouts to where you can get on there with a punch to drive the old race out. I'm just gonna use this long kind of alignment punch and I'm gonna get in from the top, capturing one edge, and then I'm gonna knock it down with a ball peen hammer and start driving it out. Hit it on one side, go to the opposite side and give it another hit. And then just go back and forth like that and slowly knock it out. And there you go, we got the race out. And now I have to come from the bottom and do the same thing. And now we have both races out. So now I'm gonna grab one of my new races that came with the 25 millimeter Marlin Crawler upgrade. And you can see it only could go in one way. This side right here that has the writing and it has like a fatter edge as opposed to this side. You want this side facing downward for the upper one and then you want it going in this direction because the bearing has to drop in to the beveled edge. So you have a, a bevel in here and the bearing is beveled so they have to fit in like this. You have to have this side facing outward. I'm just going to utilize a little bit of the grease that I'm going to use for the bearings and for the knuckles and I'm going to lubricate it and I'm going to put a little bit on the inside too. This grease is just gonna help with the insertion. So I'm gonna place this down here, and then I'm gonna utilize a brass hammer. I'm not gonna use a steel hammer, because I don't wanna mar this up. And I wanna get it started, hopefully pretty straight. So I can see that the right side is a little high. I'm gonna tap on that side first. And then I'm just gonna tap in a circle, get it started. Okay, that looks like it's driving in pretty straight. I'm gonna to transition to this recycled plastic two by four. You can use a regular piece of wood, whatever you want, or maybe you get on here with a, some type of sleeve and drive it in, whatever technique you want. But this works good. And you know when you're done is when it fully seats. This 
race actually sticks out a little bit so we'll know when we're done because we can look in from the inside and see that it's fully flush with the bottom lip. I'm going to get my block on top and then hammer straight down the middle. Take a look, see how things are going. Looks like the, the front's going in more so I have to tap more to the rear. Okay, that straightened it out. And that looks like it's it. So I get my head underneath here and I'm looking through these cutouts and I'm just looking at the race and how it comes up to this surface of the axle and it looks like it's fully flush letting me know that it's fully driven in. We did the same thing with the lower race. We greased it up, we got in position, got it started with the brass hammer. Once it was started a little bit, then we transitioned to the block. We knocked it in till it's fully seated. You'll know because you could hear the difference in the sound of it when you're hitting it. It sounds really solid. And then also, you can get your head in here and you could see how the race meets fully square with the axle housing. Next thing we have to do is we have to get these four studs out of the bottom of the knuckle because this 25 millimeter Marlin Crawler trunnion bearing upgrade kit comes with a new bearing cap on the bottom. The original one, when you slide it on, these studs are going to be sticking out below the knuckle. With this new system, we remove these studs and then the bearing cap is being held in by four Allen head bolts. If you're going over rough terrain and a rock was right there, you can grind these off and mess them up. With this setup, the bolts are recessed and protected in this bearing cap and there's nothing sticking down. The technique we're going to use to get these off is we're going to use a double nut technique. Got <laughs> I'm going to take two of the 17 millimeter nuts that attach the old bearing cap to the knuckle. I'm going to thread one on pretty much all the way down. And then I'm going to thread the second one on. I'm going to line up the nuts to where the flat edges line up. And I'm going to utilize a gear wrench, ratcheting wrench on the bottom. So once I get these tightened up against each other, I'm going to turn on the lower nut and be able to back it out. So I'm gonna slide this over, get it down there, and then I'm gonna tighten these up against each other. Nice and tight. Now with just getting on the bottom one, I'm gonna lefty loosey and I'm gonna be able to pull this stud out. On my first attempt, what happened is the nuts were just turning on the stud and the stud wasn't moving. That was because I didn't have the two nuts tighten up tight enough to each other. So I had to reset, tighten them up again really tight against each other. And now using the ratcheting wrench, I'm getting the stud actually coming out. If you're not doing the 25 millimeter upgrade kit that Marlin Crawler sells, you don't need to do this because you're using your old bearing cap. But we have to do this because we can't utilize the studs anymore. Once we got it all the way loose, we're gonna flip over our ratcheting wrench and get it to where we can now get the nuts loose. So I'll just turn it in a little bit. And you use opposing pressure and you loosen them up. If you get the wrenches in this fashion and squeeze together, you can often get it loose pretty easily. Just bring them together and now they're both loose. There we go. And now you can disconnect them. We're going to use this double nut technique on all four of these studs. As part of this Marlin Crawler 25 millimeter trunnion bearing upgrade kit, we're going to have to drive this piece out to where we can replace it with the 25 millimeter one. Remember, this is set up for 17 millimeter bearings. We have to drive this out. We're gonna utilize my Harbor Freight press. As a driving tool, I'm just gonna use a 14 millimeter impact socket. I'm gonna set this arm on two press plates, capturing it, and then I'm gonna put the socket onto the piece we need to drive out. I'm gonna center this under the press, and then I'm gonna go down Make sure it's nice and centered. Okay. Now we'll drive this out. I'm going to put my hand underneath here just to get ready for it to drop out. Okay. 
and there we go it's out now that we have the old pin out we're going to get the new pin in i'm going to use a little grease to make the insertion easier and you'll see that there is a, a longer side and a shorter side the shorter side goes into the bearing this side goes into the arm we have a couple press plates up on end that's because it's easier to deal with this brake line bracket that's welded on we'll slide this in like so and then we're not even going to use a socket or anything we're just going to use the press and then i'll bring the bottle jack close to what i'm pressing Okay, it started in there and I was just going to use the arm and press it down the rest of the way. When you meet excessive resistance, you know you're bottomed out. You could also see that you're bottomed out and now we'll release the press. And there you go. It's fully seated.